All right, so I'm Henry. Uh, I'm going to be talking a bit about uh, basically what it's like to be a maintainer. Um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, looks like the clicker isn't working. Right. Okay. Um, you can find me on Twitter as leftpad. Um, and I'm going to just yeah, talk about kind of the nature of open source uh, through my experience. Um, let me see this. So the question I want to be asking to myself is, is code enough? Um, when we think about open source, a lot of times we think it's just the code, because open source is about source code. Um, but what about, or is, it, is it more than that? Um, yeah, so I would consider this talk kind of like an intro to um, a talk that Evan gave called The Hard Parts of Open Source, which I would recommend you watch. Uh, it's a lot longer, 45 minutes. Um, so yeah, let's, we can start with the phrase itself. So open source, uh, I found out, um, is now 20 years old. Um, and like, the term itself was coined that, a lot, that long ago. And, and I think the last years has brought in a lot more people into open source, both as users and maintainers. Um, just as we saw in the last talk, like, lots of companies are using open source in, in many different ways. And one of the biggest changes is GitHub. And GitHub also turned 10 years old this year. Um, and so you know, we've introduced a lot of vocabulary, like pull requests and hackathons, even this month, Hacktoberfest. And all these things have been contributing to spreading open source. But then I'm asking myself, uh, uh, what, what does it mean to be a healthy community? Um, just because we're growing in numbers, does that mean we're actually doing well? Uh, are the metrics that we're trying to like uh, track, are they actually reflecting the state of what we're doing, or is it something else? And so my question is, how are the people doing, not just the code? Uh, what about maintainers and would-be maintainers, or people that want to get involved? You know, in this age of GitHub, so many people are getting involved, but you know, they might not understand the history, they might just be all volunteers, they're not paid, they're dependent on by hundreds of companies, uh, and they're all volunteers. I think that is kind of the way it is with the project I work on, which is called Babel. Um, a lot of people don't notice, but uh, it's not a company. Um, I'm the only, uh, we're all volunteers. And so I think it's surprising to a lot of people that this thing that so many people rely on is just like a few, a few people. Um, and it's only since March I left my job at Adobe um, and I decided to work on Babel full time. It took me about like a year to just decide to take that leap of faith and kind of decide, okay, do I want to do this thing through like crowdfunding? And so I launched like a Patreon, we have an open collective, and so right now I'm funded by the community. And even then, you know, will money solve all our issues? Um, I think there's a lot of discussion about sustainability, um, and I think uh, this is an interesting, this is what I feel about it right now, um, I guess. Um, we're, um, let's see, yeah. Um, so this was at the last conference I was at. So I thought it'd be funny to have like a little donation box uh, for me. Um, I guess it's, I'm happy to announce that I got a few hundred dollars from it, but I don't know if I should be happy or sad from that. Um, so, you know, the question is like, am I like living the dream now? Like the dream for a lot of people is to do open source full time. But you know, I'm up here, and it's like, is it just survivorship bias? Am I just, I'm just one person, right? How is this going to work out for a lot of people? And, and why do I feel so much anxiety uh, in what I'm doing? Like, you'd, if you'd think that when you're doing it full time, everything's like happy, and um, you can, you're free to do whatever you want. Um, but really, um, yeah, you know, it's the constant feeling. Like the word I would use to describe maintainer is burnout and anxiety. And, and I like to think about like, what are the reasons why that's happening? Um, yeah, so I think one of the things I've been thinking about is how our culture is shaped by the culture around us. And that includes tech culture and the culture at large. And so the thing that drew me to open source in the first place was helping people, you know, volunteer work and serving others. But I find myself moving in other directions not against my will, but because of you know, kind of the environment around me. And so it's not like someone told me I should act this way, 
um, or that I even believe it, but I kind of find myself moving in different directions. Uh, I think the phrase I would use to describe this is uh, that we are, the things that we do are caught, not taught. It's kind of like how kids pick up on what their parents do, not what they say. Uh, we're creatures of habit. And so a lot of times we learn from our experience more than just what people say. And I mean, an example of this is like coming here and giving this talk. I can feel guilty that I'm not like giving back to open source or making like commits because I'm not like working on the project. And it's not that doing this is part of open source, but, but then it's like instilled in me that being a maintainer means like, you know, making commits to this project when it's a lot more than that. And so, you know, this assumption is that code is all that matters. Like, I don't believe that, but then, but my actions and what I do might reflect that in my body. And I, I um, rather than like, even though I'm saying that, I don't believe that. Uh, another another um, thing that is interesting is this idea of gamification. So even though GitHub removes streaks, you know, it's, it's coming up in all these different ways. You know, like, hey, you know, you didn't get to this external motivation thing, now you can like pay for it to get it back. Um, and, or this idea that, you know, we have to work like so much. Um, so that, that's my uh, GitHub contribution graph over the last few years. Uh, not really proud of that. Um, you know, there's a culture of overwork in our society and, and especially in tech culture and it kind of is like bleeding into open source. You know, I was working all day and then I would do open source at night and then I have a job and I would still do it. And then now that I'm doing it full time, you know, I might feel like, am I, am I allowed to not work on the weekend? I always have to be on call. You feel like you never can take a vacation. And then if people are giving you money, you feel even worse because you're like, oh, I, I should be like working more. Um, and so this like desire to like be welcoming, be open to helping so many people causes you to like not really think about your own well-being and, and having boundaries. Um, and so this idea is, you know, and there's other things like what does success mean? Um, I think in open source, it's like how many stars do you have? How many downloads do you have? You know, how many dependencies do you have? And all those things are cool, but then do they even help what it, like maintaining the project? Like just having more people, it's, it feels like a curse in a way because you don't get more people giving you donations and you don't get people helping out. Um, so it's just more burden. And I find myself wanting to like increase those numbers even though I know that those don't matter at all. Um, this idea of like wanting to do things for yourself um, and having an internal motivation to help people is great, but then this, uh, there's all these other things are pushing me in a different way. And you know, how much are our tools helping? So this is like our Slack room. This is like a normal conversation, right? Someone joins our Slack and then just posts like an error message and they're kind of expecting you to like know what to do, right? Um, and it's not that different from the rest of our life. Like right? we have like instant, you know, viewing with Netflix and instant buying on Amazon, all these things to do things immediately and then you expect the people that are maintaining a project to do the same thing. And so there's no aspect of like a human relationship. You kind of get treated as like a robot where you kind of have to instantly respond and everything is very transactional. Um, you know, you don't need to understand anyone. You don't need to like spend time. It's just like something where people grow in impatience. Um, and worse than that is people end up uh, with, you know, entitlement. Uh, I'm sure this is pretty common, especially in open source, where it's like, hey, they just demand things from you, right? And you think that if something is free, people will be grateful for it, but um, it doesn't turn out that way. And it's really easy to want to respond in the same way, right? I think the problem is like you end, you, you're coming into this wanting to help people and they respond in that way and you're just like, I'm not like them. I'm like, and you have this, like, it makes you feel a little self-righteous too. And my desire to help people is like causing me to feel entitlement as well. Um, and so I guess one way to put this is that the things that we're doing, like the habits that we have, um, they, they're actually changing us in a way too. So we're not, the idea that we're not always in control. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, and so 
you know, ask, I'm just asking myself, like, what are the behaviors we're encouraging and incentivizing? And which ones are forming us in the ways that we want, which is the ways that we don't desire? Um, what's actually causing me to believe that overworking is okay, that success is about numbers? Um, this, I think this is an interesting way to think about it. Um, you know, this, this idea that, you know, you, you're coming in with the concern to do good for truth and all these things, but then you end up being the thing you didn't want to turn into in the first place. So when I ask people to be respectful, but then what happens when I'm get, I get mad, I get irritated, right? Um, am, I, am I just like not able to change? Am I just being affected by the environment? Um, and yeah, so like what do we actually do about that? Uh, I think th this quote is, uh, you might have heard this before, but um, let's see. Um, it's more of a joke, but uh, you know, I think because we're, we're in an open source and we're working as a team, I might define virtue a little differently um, as, as more of a habit. Right? It's a habit that brings us closer to what we think this community should be about. Um, yeah, um, and so our visions and, and what we want this community to be isn't like, it's not gonna be understood by words alone, right? It's gonna be like a way that we're supposed to be feeling and experiencing to be moved by a certain way of living, right? Um, and so the person that did that quote, uh, Larry Wall, he, did, he actually uh, wrote another quote later, which maybe is better in our community where it's the opposite, actually. So, um, and it's saying that like, how, how are we gonna be, how are we gonna be in relationship to one another as maintainers? Like, why do we even use the word maintainer? We might use the word steward or, or neighbor, right? Um, and so really, I, I like to think that open source, like a lot of life, is, is a mirror, right? It's a way of like showing you um, what you're like, what's your character. Um, why is it? Um, yeah, not just what I believe, it, like in my thoughts, but like how I, what I believe in my heart through these habits that I'm in. Um, it shows me like, yeah, what my character is. Um, so what exactly am I reflecting to everyone else when I am doing open source? Not just like output of the code, but like the way I'm doing it. Uh, but even, you know, that vision can be, um, you know, uh, changed in a different way where it's, Sometimes, you know, I have an idea of community, but that idea gives me a lot of pride into like how it should happen. And if I don't feel that it comes out that way, um, then I'm kind of imposing what, what I think over others. And yeah, so like, are those visions selfish? Like if I set my own demands and it fails, then I'll say it's, it's someone else's fault. And I think like, this pursuit of what, what we want isn't, might actually be a detriment when we're not actually doing it, right? Um, like loving the dream more than the people itself. And so, yeah, the question is, what is our call as maintainers and people in open source? Uh, what, what, what should we do? Uh, I think a way to summarize it is, um, let's see. Yeah, I would call it, you know, a long obedience in the same direction, right? Doing um, virtue in, in, for a long time, for the long run, right? Um, to show people that like, when, when they don't deserve it, you still show them love. When, when you're growing impatient, that you don't lash out at people, um, that you can serve people without demanding some kind of recognition. Um, and the idea like, where, where's our hope coming from? Um, yeah, and so if you're interested in what I think that looks like, through the lens of faith, uh, I actually just made a podcast um, with my friend Nadia last Tuesday. Um, and so we released it kind of like Netflix style, so you can like binge listen to it. Um, and yeah, I just talked a lot about, so like 30 minutes for each episode, about how I see um, you know, like faith and related to like community, evangelism, raising money, um, bringing in new people, welcoming people, things like that. Uh, thanks. <laughs>